Hey guys, I'm Royal Dunn Studios, and we are back again for a, another tutorial. Now, before I start, I wanted to mention that this is a uh, not really beginner tutorial series. Um, I would say this is like an alternative beginner series because we're going to be covering uh, the physics side of Game Maker as opposed to the the whole X and Y type stuff. So we're still going to be starting off, and I'm going to explain this as um, as if. Uh, you're new to this, the whole physics side, but again, this is uh, different from everything else. Uh, and before I mention, as again, uh, if you have an error or a like some type of bug in your game, uh, I'm gonna have a new system of uh, essentially answering those those bug uh, reports, I guess, and error stuff. Uh, I'll, ha I'll have the information down in the description below, but. Uh, Essentially, instead of uh, you commenting on the video and posting your error, uh, I'd be much appreciated if uh, I'd appreciate it if you would email me, uh, and I, I would have a system of how you would do that. Because if you post it on the YouTube video, then it would take me like a, at least a full day, if not two, uh, or at least whenever I go back on my computer to answer those. If you do it uh, by email, I can answer them whenever because uh, I've emailed my phone I can't really answer YouTube comments on uh, on YouTube but if you have like a some type of bug just try and email me I'll have uh, the information down in the description I might actually just post it in the comments but anyways let's get started so as I mentioned we're going to do a uh, game maker physics platformer and I already have the sprites here so we have a quick idle animation, just our guy bobbing up and down, and our guy running. And that's basically it. So I assume you would already have a, uh, a character at this point, and we'll just create a solid block, since that seems to be a reoccurring event in almost every single game. We'll create the size to be 16 by 16, and then go ahead and fill that in with a black that is at the opacity of at least 100. Uh, what this does is it's le it lets us see uh, our tiles whenever we implement tiles on our actual level. So let's go ahead and create an two objects here. Uh, we'll make object 0 our OBJ sol uh, solid. Sorry about that. And we'll give it that solid sprite. We're not going to do anything for this now, but keep in mind uh, what we're going to do to both of these in a second. So we'll do obj underscore player. And this will be our player object. Let's give him his idle sprite. Now here's where it's going to get a little different. Uh, as I said, we're going to use physics. So right here in the this little options menu check uses physics and do that on both now let's do our solid object first what we want to do is go to modify collision shape and before we do that uh, select box so we know that it's a box and you see it brings up this little window here uh, with a lot of probably random things if you're new to this uh, but essentially what should show up is your sprite right here and then this little funky box that you can move around. Basically all you need to do is uh, set the box so it matches the sprite and that's all you have to do. And then for the density, set that to zero uh, because we don't want this uh, object to move. So zero, I think actually it's negative one, maybe. Uh, we don't want this object to move, so what you do is you set it to basically infinite, so the mass of the object is, is infinite, so basically it'd be really, like, really heavy, and you can't move it. Uh, and that's basically all you have to do. Uh, we might have to go back to this, I'm not sure though. Uh, now we can go to our OBJ player and do the exact same thing. Go to box, modify collision shape. Uh, which, okay, that was weird. Uh, bring out the box and make sure it matches the sprite. 
try and match it up as closely as possible to uh, the actual sprite because you don't want uh, you don't want the player colliding with things he shouldn't be colliding to. So that's basically it. We can just press OK. Uh, set his density to one instead of actually we can just do negative one. Uh, no, let's do one. Uh, the reason we're putting this to one is because if the player jumps and he's set to a uh, infinite mass, then he'll just like not even jump. He'll just uh, stay on the ground. So if you give him a slightly high yet slightly low uh, density, then whenever he'll jump, he'll actually uh, like arc and you know start off really fast, go slow, and then start or start falling really fast. Uh, and then we can finally start coding. So close out of the OBJ solid and go into your player's create event. And we're just going to set a few variables here. Uh, we'll do direction equals right. And this we probably won't use in this tutorial. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and set this anyways for now. Uh, we're going to set a speed variable. We're going to set it to uh, let's do six. I think that should be fine. And I'm trying to remember. I think that should be it. Yeah. All right. So now what you want to do is go into your objects step event, and we're gonna code his first movement ability. So movement. We're just gonna comment this out. Three comments or three forward slashes mark this as a like uh, the head comment, I guess you could say. So as you can see right here, it says movement instead of execute a piece of code. And here we go. So I'm going to be using the WASD keys uh, along with space for jump. So I'll do both versions if you want to use the arrow keys. So if keyboard underscore check parentheses board parentheses and then in quotations we're gonna we're gonna put a uh, D so this is our moving right uh, code I'm gonna go down one and we're gonna execute this so here's it's gonna get a little weird instead of X plus speed we're going to do physics or PHY underscore position underscore X and you can see it right there and plus equals speed so all this does is, is it essentially it takes out the need to do the place underscore free so up here as you can see we do if keyboard underscore check so we check for the button and then usually we would check for uh, a place in front of the object to see if it's like empty and then we would move here what it does is it we just check for the the player input which would be the D button and then this essentially handles that whole place underscore free as a matter of fact it does it better because uh, it takes away that little pixel gap that you usually see so essentially it's kind of easier without being easier and we're just gonna copy and paste this and change some of the values so instead of D, we're going to put A, and instead of plus equals, we're going to do minus equals, and if you want to do the the arrow key method, you have to do keyboard underscore check parentheses VK underscore left or right. It, it's either VK underscore left or VK underscore right, and you would change that instead of uh, the ORD uh, parentheses A and all that stuff. So, if we go ahead and add a new room, uh, this should be fine. Actually, let's change the view. Let's add a view. Actually, no, let's not add a view real quick. Let's uh, let's go to physics. Go to the little physics tab. Uh, check room is a physics world. And all of these settings are pretty good. So we're going to go to the objects tab and add a small map for our player to play on and we're just going to do like 
a giant platform like that and our player so if we run the game uh, we should be able to move I think yeah so we're moving our player is falling down and I remember why so the reason our player falls through the uh, the object floor is because game makers technically not checking for that object so what you have to do is this is a simple fix go to the player object go to collision and obj solid and then drag some code in there and just comment that out just do checking for collision and that's all you have to do and that basically ensures that the player will will always check for a floor and like acknowledges that it's uh, I guess a real object so as you can see we're moving left and right perfectly fine and now we can get onto the jump which is probably uh, one of the most I guess tricky parts so we'll do if keyboard underscore check and then vk underscore space so that's basically uh, that's checking for the actual input of the space button and then we're going to execute this uh, physics underscore apply underscore impulse so what this does this little function does is essentially uh, right under the player it'll it'll do like a little uh, pulse wave I guess that will push the player upward and then it'll fall back down so it's fake jumping I guess not really and we'll just do X comma Y because that's where the player is uh, the X impulse will be zero because we don't want the player to move uh, left or right and the Y impulse will be let's say five for now that should be fine oh that should be negative five I think because game makers y axis is, is uh, screwed up a little yep there we go and as you can see our player is floating infinitely because we haven't set any uh, parameters so right now our player can just jump forever so what we're going to do is in our create event set a few more variables jumping equals false uh, what this variable will check if is uh, if the player has jumped or not essentially if he's on the ground or not then he can if he's on the ground he can jump if he's not he can't and image speed equals 0 0.5 just so our player doesn't look all weird when he's running and then in our movement we'll just do and jumping equals false so we're going to stick that right alongside the the if keyboard underscore check vk underscore space and now we're going to check if the player has grounded so if right right under the the, the jump function we're going to do this if place underscore meeting x comma y plus one so this will check below the player comma obj underscore solid again this will check uh, under the player to see if there's a solid object under him then jumping equals false and then back up here we'll set jumping to equal true whenever we do jump So let me just increase the font size real quick so you guys can see. This is all we have. And now, if we run the game, I don't think our player's height is uh, 
Yeah, our jump isn't isn't very good. It's too slow. So I've set that negative five to negative eight probably. And I think that should be fine. Now we're gonna do animations. Uh this part will get kind of weird, so hopefully you already have animations. Uh, sprite underscore index. Uh, so put this under your both of your uh, left and right keys. Sprite underscore index equals spr underscore player run. And that'll just set uh, his animation to equal run whenever he's running, obviously. And also under that, we'll do image underscore x scale equals negative one when we're moving left, and image underscore x scale to equal one when we're moving right. What this does is it basically saves you on animations, so you don't have to do uh, two times the like twice the animations. So instead of having two animations for one moving left and one moving right, you can just have one, and it basically flips this for the the sprite. Yeah, so you can see him; he's kind of moving, being all weird. And let's test our jump. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so you can see he kind of flipped there. That was kind of weird. Uh, we're going to go ahead and restrict that so he doesn't rotate. So physics underscore rotation equals false. I think. I think that's it. Sorry about that. So it's PHY underscore fixed rotation equals true. And this will lock the player to his rotation so he doesn't rotate whenever he jumps or uh, ends up on a corner. So as you can see, he's no longer rotating. And he falls down softly. Alright, we're going to go ahead and change the room's gravity. So go to the physics tab for the room and set the gravity to be somewhere around 20 maybe. That's for this game. I'm not really sure how much it would be for your game. And... To be honest, we're kind of done. Uh, for the whole movement tutorial, we're done. And I don't think there's anything else to do. Yeah, so we can jump. And we fall down like we were supposed to. And that's basically it. The uh, last thing that you should probably do if you're starting a new project is go into your global game settings. Uh, go to the Windows tab and then the sub tab graphics and uncheck interpolate colors between pixels what this will do is if your game runs on uh, pixel art graphics uh, sometimes you might notice that the the plate like the pixel art looks very blurry that'll stop it uh, the reason game maker does that is in case you're using a uh, higher resolution art it'll kind of blend the pixels so it looks smoother uh, and again that's that's it so thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, I'm sorry for not being on in a very long time. Uh, I got caught up in things. I'm trying to change the way I uh, manage the channel, basically. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, comment on what the next uh, tutorial, I guess, should be. I'm thinking about doing uh, tiles again. Because we need to do different tiles. We need to do... Uh, slopes and stuff so that should be fun and yeah so thank you guys for watching and goodbye